I've got the title of Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. And it comes from Exodus 15, 26. And uh, just before I start, I want to say that if in whatever I'm speaking and saying, this is not to bring anybody into condemnation, but indeed to set free. So if you have a little whispering, niggling thing, it's probably the enemy if he's trying to bring you into condemnation because that's exactly what the enemy does. He's the one that condemns, Jesus never does. So uh, we're going to look at some of the promises God makes about healing and protection, and then some of the hindrances that sometimes get in the way. It's one of the greatest subjects that uh, Christians have discussed over the years, why don't certain people get healed and why do others get healed and so on. Well, as far as I'm concerned, let's look at what God's word says and let's hang on to that and work with that. And uh, Bill Johnson has been uh, reported as saying, don't let your experience shape your theology. Let the word be the, the truth. And uh, another friend of mine said to me one day, don't let the facts get in the way of truth. And I puzzled over that for a minute because my brain isn't that quick, but uh, it, uh, you know, don't let the facts, the apparent facts around you get in the way of the truth because Jesus is the truth. And what he says goes. And in fact, all the political wranglings are going on right now. He says, what he says goes. We are basically secure in what he says. So, uh, the scripture was in the middle of uh, the, the desert. Moses has been crying out for help because the, wa the water they came to, as usual, the Israelites were moaning and complaining, uh, which they were pretty good at. Uh, and uh, so he's just made the water good to drink. And then God speaks to them and he said, if you will listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, obeying his commands and keeping all his decrees, then I will not make you suffer any of the diseases I sent on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. And that is the, the start verse, if you like, to where, where we start with. God himself is the healer. And he says that that's it, that's one of his names. So along with all the other names that we know of God, he is the healer. His whole heart is to see his people alive and enjoying life. The, the verses that say, I've come that you might have life and life in all its fullness is exactly what we're about. So, um, the overriding factor for the Israelites was that they got to obey a lot of laws. And uh, thankfully, Jesus has come and fulfilled that law for us. So what's the overriding factor for us? And I believe the overriding factor is relationship. Jesus gave two parables, the parable of the two sons, and the rich young ruler. And in both of those, there was a lack of relationship. Both the prodigal son and the son who stayed at home didn't really appreciate the relationship they had with their father. And the rich young ruler set off by saying, what must I do to be saved? And really the answer to that is, hand it over to me. Jesus says, I will save you. You can't save yourself. So, the, uh, there are conditions on healing and things like that. The Old Testament, you've got all the conditions there. Um, the New Testament conditions that we need to be righteous. Well, of course, none of us are, but we are because Jesus has made us righteous. So, in all of this, Jesus is our righteousness. So, when the enemy comes whispering in and says, it's all your fault, you say, no, my Jesus has already paid the price. I don't need to pay it again. And I give a little testimony of uh, what happened to me one, early one morning. Uh, I had a cancer some years ago and uh, I completely peace about it. It was, uh, um, it was like pinching myself almost to, to believe it's really true, you know, and so on. And one morning though, I woke up and there was this panic it was a usual sort of five o'clock in the morning, thunk, 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 thunk goes your heart as, it's your fault, it's your fault, it's your fault, it's your sin, it's your sin. And almost as those words were buzzing around my head, 
I was reminded of the verse, the, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. It goes on to say about leading righteous, but those were the bits. And at that point, I just spoke them out quietly so as not to wake my wife, and peace flooded back in. And I, it was like being slain in the spirit in the Toronto days, you know, out, out flucking the button and just in the presence of God. For about the next three hours, I couldn't tell you whether I slept or was really enjoying his presence. It, would just, it just passed. But that's just, a, 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 just an example of when the enemy is there. Who, he's the one who said will steal, kill and destroy. And that's who brings a lot of the stuff upon us. And we have to fight through and God has given us the weapons. For instance, if you struggle with that, God's perfect plan. There's no sickness in heaven, and there was no sickness in the Garden of Eden, right? Until the enemy came in and whispered to Adam and Eve, they had a perfect relationship with God. And there's no name of God that says, I'm here to bring you illnesses. He always says, I am God who heals. There's our youth is renewed like the eagles. And one of the things, again, going to back to the declarations, the number of people you hear say, well, I am getting old. I, I am this old now. I am that. Hang on a second. The word of God says our youth is renewed. So things of old age, we should be able to say, hang on, no, I will not have that. That does not belong in me because Jesus has paid the price. And his word is that my youth will be renewed. There's restoration and compassion. God's heart for Israel, his church, all, there's loads and loads of verses where he speaks to Israel, he speaks to his church saying, return to me and I'll heal you. My whole heart to you is to have you in a good place. And the time after time, he has to keep reminding people, but if we're in that place, then that is the point of where we should know his healing, know his strength and everything else. It's an interesting aside, one of the things that uh, the uh, length of life was promised to, I think it was Noah, of 120 years, and it's actually not been rescinded yet. So we all think, you know, oh, 80. Well, actually, maybe we should be thinking longer, but that's a little aside. But if we think about the fact that we got the blessing of Abraham, and Abraham lived to 175. He was having kids that got 100, so hey, you know, he's quite an active guy. Sarah to 127, and so on. There is Psalm 90 which says, oh, well, you know, be 70, lucky. If you're lucky, you get to 80. But somebody pointed out that is actually the psalm that's written about them coming across the, the wilderness. When they'd all said, and notice again, the said, we're, you brought us out here to die in the wilderness to Moses. That was one of their mantras. Oh, we should have, we we're better off in Egypt. You've brought us out here to die. And eventually God said, that's going to happen because you have said it. Again, another declaration coming into that. John 10.10 10 says that he has come to give us life and life in its abundance. Ephesians 3.19 says something very similar. And so that is what God wants to do. Now, I've well exceeded my five minutes. There's a lot of more to, to declare. But um, one of the things and the victories we can get is through worship and declaration. And somebody pointed out to me, uh, I knew about Jehoshaphat and the fact that when his army started to sing, that's when the enemy dissolved because the enemy fought amongst itself and they didn't have a battle to fight. And Israel at the time were a very impoverished nation. Paul and Silas, somebody reminded me of that. What were they doing when the prison doors all burst open? They were having a worship session. You know, no guitars and things like that, but they were singing, they were worshipping, and look what happened. We do have to have faith. Uh, the, the demonised boy, the time when they come down the mountain and... Uh, there's the, that, and Jesus is quite straightforward. He sighs at their lack of faith. And we're often loath to sort of point that out to anybody because obviously we don't want to cause them to be, feel guilt or anything like that. But there is a measure of 
grasping yeah they, god does want me healed he doesn't want me in this this mess he doesn't want me ill he doesn't want me sick this isn't a, a way of learning things the, the the learning is if anything to say i've got authority over these and i'm pr practicing my authority start with the you know your common cold and say get lost and see the authority working um so as to move on um one of the big hindrances is of course unforgiveness now that is a big one and there's times i've come uh, years ago now but praying for folk and god's just whispered in me unforgiveness and i've been able to say to the person have you got anybody you haven't forgiven you've got a problem with and almost all the time when that god says that they they look at me oh yes and i said well look i don't need to know the details but you've got to go away and forgive them and when you do you'll be released from uh, whatever the thing was they were wanting. So uh, it can lead, I believe, to chronic disorders and all sorts of things. The other thing about declarations that I really want to stress is we, that, that Matthew 12, 36 says we'll be held accountable for all every idle word. Well, when I first heard that, I thought, what? What, what's God on about? You know, surely I can, I can sit and chat and not get told off for it. You know, it, 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 what, what, what's an idle word? And then it came, it's, uh, God opened it up and said, basically, the phrases you use that you shouldn't be. And the number of times you say, oh, I can't do that. Now, if it's about something sinful, fair enough. But, oh, I can't. I'm not able. Or... The times we all, and it's a common saying in Britain, sadly, where we say, I'm afraid. And it's a, we tag it on at the end of the sentence, I'm very sorry, I can't do that for you, I'm afraid. And you think, why are we saying that? Why are we actually adding that on? And say, well, no, I'm, and, and I found myself having to get rid of that one and saying, actually, no, I'm not afraid. I'm not going to declare that over my life. Um, another thing is, if you have an illness, labelling it as yours. And uh, one lady came for prayer one morning and uh, she said, oh, it's my arthritis. And I stopped straight away and said, no, it's not. Not unless you want to keep it. It's not yours. Let's get rid of it. De don't declare it as mine. Re rebuke that and something else. Um, I'm hopeless. I'm hopeless at this. I'm hopeless at that. It very easily sips out, doesn't it? With all those things. Rather, why not use biblical quotes? I am a child or a man or a woman of God. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I am royalty. I'm a priest of the Most High. I am loved with an everlasting love. I can scale a wall. I am being changed from glory to glory. He who began a good work in me will bring it to completion. I can hear God. I am blessed. I am healed by his stripes. My youth is renewed like the eagles. My God shall provide all I need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Why not? They're the declarations that we perhaps need to ask the Holy Spirit to pop into our mind when we're faced with the various challenges that uh, we are faced with. If we are struggling with illnesses and things like that, we, it's good to come and get prayed for and all the rest, but ask the Holy Spirit to reveal that if there are any issues in our uh, past. I mean, what Eric was sharing with... Uh, that our friends earlier you know about things that were in the past that need dealing with um are there any you know lack of faith unforgiveness declarations that uh, we've been making that have actually been contrary to to truth or the way of truth um any communion issues because of course communion is mentioned if we've taken that inappropriately at any stage you know that it does say that it uh, some who have done that uh, have fallen ill and in fact it says some have, have fallen asleep meaning have died so there's little things like that but don't get hung up on it let the holy spirit reveal it don't let the enemy get you into guilt and condemnation so really there's a whole host more verses that's uh, really what i wanted to share with you uh, don't listen to the eyes of the enemy the enemy that you're not worthy because you are because you are precious in his sight. I, I wrote a song, Precious in His Sight, which uh, just came to me one day. But that's it. We are precious in his sight. And there's loads of scriptures which tell us that he, it were precious. 
There's one that says we're the apple of his eye. You know, we are really, really precious and he loves it when we come into his presence. Don't be afraid to rebuke and take authority over things literally by audibly, rebu or audibly rebuking them in Jesus' name. And when the cancer turned up on, on my leg, I remember looking at the thing and um, I suspected what it might be. I hadn't had it diagnosed at that point, but I put my hand on it and I said, in Jesus' name, you are going. You've no authority, out, off you go. And uh, it was surgically removed, but it was the sense that, you know, all through it, I had peace, you know, and I'm still here 10 years later telling, telling that tale that God set me free, that God delivered me. But what I spoke out, I used to be very depressive and all the rest of it. And ta that, that I was telling that story earlier and um, that story was basically of, I had had a period of depression. Being a Christian, I hadn't uh, ever dared admit that to and go to a doctor or anything like that. Hey, Christians don't get depression, do they? Well, of course, in this uh, instance, it was the case. But one day I'd been praying for this thing to go away and praying for this thing to go away. And finally I said, OK, God, if you want me this way for the rest of my days, I'll have to live with it, won't I? And it went. Came back a bit later. And the next one was even more remarkable because I knew nothing. I was in a a staid evangelical church who didn't really believe in the miraculous or the gift of the Holy Spirit. But we'd been on holiday, had been quite fed up and cheesed off and depressed, I suppose, with the word. And the next door neighbour turned up and he said these words. He says, oh, how was your holiday? And I had a decision to make at that point. Did I say, oh, well, it's pretty bad because I'm miserable? Or was, did I tell him what actually really was the truth? Which I said, oh, we had a great time. It was brilliant. And as I spoke those words out, the depressive thing went. I knew nothing about declarations at that time, but now I do, and I look back, and I thought, yes, I declared the truth, which we had a good holiday, the kids had enjoyed it, and we'd been, a, a, you know. What I felt about it wasn't the truth. The truth I declared, and when that happened, the thing went and I was lifted out. And all I can say is that time after time, little colds, things like that, they start to get in. At that point, I say, in the name of Jesus Christ, out you go. You don't reside here. You're not allowed. And time after time, I found that those little niggles, you know, the burns in the back of your nose, whatever, at that point, if I tell it to go, it goes. Because Jesus wants us healed. And I think we need to take that authority. It's a personal thing, but also over each other. And we can agree with each other that health and wholeness is what we are destined for and what we are here to give to the world about us as a testimony so that we lay hands on folk and they get healed. They get set free. And then we can say that's God's power. And that's what God has said at the start of all of this was, I'm the God who heals. And we want people to know that.